are electron configurations shown? An electron configuration shows the placement of electrons in an atom. The number and configuration of electrons determine the chemistry of the atom and are therefore important to understand. Boxes are used to represent orbitals and arrows represent electrons. The first of the three rules is the off-bow principle. It states that electrons must fill subshells and orbitals so the total energy of the atom is at the minimum. What does this mean? It means that electrons must fill the lowest possible subshell or orbital before moving on to the next higher energy subshell or orbital. Watch as a diagram shows the energy levels from the lowest subshell to higher subshells. One S is the lowest energy subshell and six P is the highest shown on this diagram. Notice that orbitals do not always go in numeric order. For example, three P is followed by four S, which is then followed by three D and then four P. Overall, as an average, the level three orbitals have less energy than the level four orbitals. However, a specific pair of orbitals may not go in numeric order. 3D is higher energy than 4S, but as an average, the 3s are lower than the 4s. The second rule is Hund's rule. It states that you should put an electron in each orbital of a subshell before doubling up. This allows for the lowest possible energy of the electrons. For example, if you need to add three electrons to a P shell, add one to each before beginning to double up. The last of the three rules is the Pauli exclusion principle. It states two electrons in the same orbital must have different spins. Spin is the word we use to describe the angular momentum of the electron. Spin is designated with the direction of the arrow, either up or down. If you want to add four electrons to P subshell, you'll need to double up. When you double up, make them opposite spins. How do you know how many electrons to place in a configuration? The charge is the number of protons minus the number of electrons. The atomic number gives the number of protons. Therefore, the charge is the atomic number minus the number of electrons. For example, Br negative 1. The charge is negative 1. The atomic number for bromine is 35. Negative 1 equals 35 minus electrons. This means the Br negative 1 anion has 36 electrons. Another example is chlorine. Since no charge is written, it is assumed to be zero. The atomic number for chlorine is 17. Zero equals 17 minus electrons. There are 17 electrons in a chlorine atom. Let's apply these rules to an example. The off-bow principle, the Hund's rule, and the Pauli exclusion principle. Give the electron configuration for a chlorine atom. No charge is written, therefore it's zero. The atomic number of chlorine is 17. 0 equals 17 minus electrons. There are 17 electrons that need to be placed. Begin with level 1s. There is one orbital. When doubling up in the same orbital, you must use different spins. 
Next, move on to 2s. It also has one orbital. The next energy level is 2p. Remember to place one in each box before doubling up. We're only to 10 electrons, we need to keep going. Level 3s can hold two. Level 3p can hold six. However, we only need five. This has reached our limit of 17 electrons for the chlorine atom. What is spectroscopic notation? Spectroscopic notation is a shorthand method of showing electron configurations. Rather than showing boxes for orbitals and arrows for electrons, the number of electrons is written as a superscript after the orbital designation. For example, for this box and arrow configuration, this is a spectroscopic configuration. To write spectroscopic notation, determine the number of electrons. Follow the off-bow principle. Fill in the subshells until they reach their max. 2 for an S, 6 for a P, 10 for a D, or 14 for an F. The total of all the superscripts is equal to the total number of electrons in the atom. For example, Give the spectroscopic notation for sulfur. No charge is written, therefore it's zero. The atomic number is 16. Zero equals 16 minus electrons. We need to place 16 electrons. Follow Aufbau's principle to begin with level 1s. 1s can hold two. 2s can hold 2. 2p can hold 6. 3s can hold 2. 3p can hold 6, but we only need 4 to add up to a total of 16. How do electron configurations relate to the periodic table? Look at the electron configuration for each of the halogens. They are all in group number seven on the periodic table. They each end with P5. They end with a different principal energy level, fluorine with level two, chlorine with level three, and so on, but they all end with five electrons in the P subshell. Every group in the periodic table ends with the same number of electrons in its highest energy subshell. The first two columns in the periodic table end with S1 and S2. On the far right side is the P section, P1 through P6. The middle includes the D, D1 through D10. And the columns on the bottom of the periodic table, often show separate, are the Fs, 1 through 14. We refer to parts of the periodic table by their highest energy subshell that's occupied. The first two columns are the S block. The far right side is the P block. The middle, the D block. And the bottom, the F block. To use the periodic table as a tool for filling order of subshells, the F block must be placed in numerical order of the elements. The F block is traditionally pulled out and placed on the bottom in order to fit standard paper. However, watch where it really belongs. Once it is moved in place, the periods 
rows of the periodic table can be labeled with the subshells. The S block begins with level 1. Begin labeling this section with 1S. The P block begins in level 2. Begin labeling this block with 2P. The D subshell begins in level 3. This block is labeled with 3D. And finally, the F subshells begin in level 4. To see the filling order of subshells, read from left to right, top to bottom. Another tool for remembering orbital filling order is shown here. The S's are listed on the left from 1 to 8. The P's begin on row number 2, the D's on row number 3, and the F's on row number 4. To read this chart, follow the order. Move down one diagonal as far as possible, then jump to the top of the next diagonal. 